side with you. I've always done well here at Mammoth. Uh, both the Kamikaze and the Solemn here just seem to be good courses for me. It's always an adventure to see what happens at the Eliminator. Last year we had to make up a few rules as we went along. Uh, an opponent and I both crashed and they didn't plan on anything like that happening. So hopefully that won't happen this year. Mistake-free riding by Kim Sonye, and if Regina Stiefel is hoping for an error by the front runner right now, she's got the odds against her. Kim is so smooth and so confident. She's planning on one thing, and that's first place. Kim Sonye flat tracking through the turns here, gets off the jump nice and smooth, out of the saddle, and pedals her way to the finish line. In spite of the best efforts by the German rider, Kim Sonye has got a sizable lead as she heads for the finish line and not much of an opportunity to make a mistake here. She's in the final corner. Kim Sonye has already disposed of the defending champion, Missy Giovi. She's got a big lead here, but Stiefel has ridden so calm and so confident, waiting for mistakes to happen, and we have seen strange things happen. Kim, you have a three-and-a-half-second lead. Where did you get ahead of Regina? I got ahead of her after the second switchback on the section that everyone calls the freeway. I started pulling away from her there. That's the fastest part of the course. And then in the chicane in the hard corner before the jump, I managed to gap her a little more. She's not as strong at cornering as I am, so I worked on her weaknesses. As we wait for the women's final in the consolation, Cindy Whitehead was able to beat her old nemesis, Missy Giovi, to take third place in the women's consolation race. And earthquake Jake Watson, for the second year in a row, finishes third, this time outdueling Toby Henderson for the honors. When we come back, the men's final, there's Miles Rockwell and Jason McCroy. Racers ready? This racing tip is brought to you by Mountain Dew. There's only one line through this final corner before you hit the final straightaway. If the rider in second place is going to come around, he's going to have to pick the perfect gear and explode by him in this final straightaway. Our men's finalists, Jason McCroy of the UK and Miles Rockwell of the United States, a couple of tired guys with two more races to win this thing. That's right. They've both shown a lot of endurance just to get this far. And endurance is really going to count in these last runs, because the more tired you are, the more chance of making a mistake, and that's where the other guy will capitalize. What do you attribute your success to today? I think fitness is a big, a big um, factor in it. I'm, I can handle bike is almost as good as anyone. I think. My fitness seems to be up on one of the guys I've raced against. So I've had a lot of time to um, make up. You know, if I've made any mistakes in the corners, I can make them straight. So. Miles Rockwell on the right, an established star, one of the best downhillers in the world. Second fastest qualifier behind his teammate Jimmy Deaton, who's out of the competition. But who is this Jason McCroy character? He's put a lot of bike riders in the bleachers and goes to the final against Miles Rockwell. The two fastest guys. These guys are awesome. Rockwell has opened a big lead on Jason McCroy going into that soft left-hand turn, but McCroy has said he's confident in his ability to pedal up to the leaders, and sure enough, he closes the gap on the quick cornering Miles Rockwell. McCroy pushes a huge gear through here, I think bigger than anyone we've seen. Now Rockwell, only with a small lead over McCroy, McCroy has closed it up comfortably, and Ned, he wants to draft closely there, I think, because there's a lot less dust and rocks coming off the back tire if you stay a little close. Right. The closer you are, the dust doesn't get as high. The further you come back, then the dust kind of fans out. Now, both of them stiff-legging through the turn. That's that big drop-off to their right. And as they come around this soft corner, it's, again, very obvious how much the course has softened up. They both come to almost a complete stop, and McCroy almost went down. Jason is close the gap and he's tucked in right behind miles now using that draft this is like riding on the beach very soft in that right hand turn once again rockwell out of the saddle tries to open a gap but mccroy pedals right up to him that's right but miles has been extremely fast through these turns down on the freeway section the high speed stuff that's where he excels this is a very close race indeed don't be fooled by the amount of distance between these two riders that is not too big of a gap. Look how smooth and efficient Rockwell is through the turns. But Jason McCroy is matching him pretty well here as they get through there, carrying a lot of speed. Their entry speed is high. The exit speed is just as high. They have not scrubbed off much through these S sections here. If it was anyone else, Miles might have had this race won. But Jason's got that power. 
Jason McCroy, no panic here. Look at there, Miles Rockwell, a little bit of a bobble. McCroy might have closed up a little bit of ground there, but he's certainly not panicking. He's very confident of his ability to stay close. Pedaling at over 50 miles an hour, it looks like Jason's closing it up a little bit. Miles Rockwell had said he was getting a little bit tired, but when adrenaline kicks in, there's no tired to be had. Now, Jason McCroy has definitely closed up within easy striking distance here, but again, he's not looking to pass. He seems to be confident of his ability to sprint at the finish. He's not even trying to get around Rockwell. Miles gets a little wide in that last turn, and Jason had a better line. Once again, Rockwell breaking later, carries some more speed, opens the gap up again, and then McCroy closes it back with his pedaling. Now we're coming up on that crucial turn, which is one of the last places to pass before the finish. Now Jason McCroy has pulled right up behind Miles Rockwell here. Once again, he's being very patient, maybe had an opportunity to pass. Rockwell looking back, wondering why McCroy's not coming. Miles wants to take up as much of the track as possible so he doesn't give McCroy a line. Another look, both guys with their feet out, quickly disengaging out of those step in. Whoa, Miles Rockwell with a tank slapper there, but he held it up. He did a great job of saving it. Now look at McCroy. He comes around. I haven't seen anybody pass there all day. Great pass, taking advantage of an opportunity. Now Jason McCroy with the advantage. Rockwell's almost in the fence, goes through the mud. McCroy's looking over the wrong shoulder. Maybe he thought Rockwell had crashed. And look at the time difference, 16 hundredths of a second. McCroy making his move, powering around on the outside to take the win. Miles rode an incredible race. The top half, he was just incredible. On the corners, I was really having to hold on to try and get him, and on the straightaways, I was really having to push. He just, he, his cornering is just superior to anything I've seen. Well, I had like two seconds on coming onto the freeway, and he pulled right back up on me. Uh, it just shows that I'm getting a little bit tired, but I'm not going to let it affect me. I'm going to go out and ride even harder this run and see if I can beat him. It's a pretty small margin. Um, maybe I'll, uh, who knows what I'll do. I'm hoping make him make a mistake. One little mistake is all it'll take. Question is, who's going to make it? One last run down the Kamikaze course to decide the women's championship. Kim Sonnier of the United States would appear to be in control over Regina Stiefel, but Ned, we've seen that anything can happen in the Reebok Eliminator. Kim's got about a three-second lead over Regina. Regina's much stronger in the straightaways, and Kim is faster through the turn, so it, it'll be an evenly matched race. This one's for all the marbles. The final descent, the German and the American. Three and a half seconds to make up for Regina. Throughout this competition, Stiefel has been patient and opportunistic, waiting for her opponent to make a mistake and then pouncing on it like a lion. But Sonier has been mistake-free. She has ridden flawless on every run, and instead it has been her opponents who have been forced into errors. This one last race is going to be a good one. Both of them armored up to the max. Kim Sonier in red, Stiefel in blue as they head down the mountain. It's Regina Stiefel who has to make the race, Ned. Kim is in control. Regina has to force Kim to make a mistake to get back that three and a half seconds. And on the other hand, Kim Sonye just has to stay close, but instead she goes to the lead. She sweeps right around Stiefel. We've seen her do that before. She is fearless and does not get on the brakes at all going into that first turn. It's her confident style, and we haven't seen her even come close to making a mistake today. A former motocross motorcycle racer, and obviously all that ability has put fear way in the back of her mind. Kim is leading out here, and Regina's behind. Now, Regina needs to come around and force the pace. Somewhat of a pedestrian pace, both of them realizing that if you can't get an advantage quickly at the top, there's no point in forcing the issue until you get down into the part of the course they call the freeway, where it's a little more technical and there are more opportunities to gain time. Regina from Germany is not used to riding on these high-speed, wide-open, American-style courses. In Europe, the courses are more technical. She's a very good technical rider in the turns at low speeds, but it is Kim Sonnier who is able to use the high-speed cornering to open a gap and then to extend her lead. Here, however, she has allowed Regina Stiefel to move around in front, content once again perhaps to just stalk her opponent from behind. Very slow through this turn, Ned. Yep, they're coming up on the freeway where, again, there'll be a big draft, so I don't expect to see anything happen here to the lower part of the course. Kim Sonnier just riding in the draft of Regina Stiefel. The speed is up nearly 52 miles an hour, so they are moving. And here, Sonier uses that draft and just slingshots around as Stiefel breaks for the turn. 
Kim is very good in these high speed turns and we see once again she's establishing a gap in the higher speed soft turns. Look at her come through that turn. All confidence. That's where she almost lost it against Missy Giovi but now she is flying towards the finish line and the closer she gets to the bottom of the hill the less opportunity there is for Regina Stiefel to make up any time. Kim Sonye down in an aerodynamic tuck position and Stiefel is barely in the picture as they come around here just a few turns from the finish. Stiefel's got to stay close in case Kim makes a mistake so she can capitalize. But no mistakes made yet as Kim Sonye now pedals her way to the finish line here. A big right hand turn, a couple of quick corners and then the finish line will be in sight. Kim can taste the finish line. She is charging for it, but Regina is tightening it up. Stiefel starting to close the gap. There's a big gust of wind coming in from the side there. Dust in the eyes, that could be a problem. But it looks as though with the goggles, Kim Sonye now gets her foot out, and she's clearly looking for that finish line. And only a couple more turns, she'll make it. There's that big sweeper before the finish line. A couple people have crashed there today. Kim will have to be careful. She can afford to just tiptoe around this last corner, and now as she powers to the finish line, she even has time to steer around the mud, get her hand up in the air. Kim Sonye takes the second ride and makes it look easy. Our Reebok Eliminator champion is Kim Sonye, who adds this to her dual slalom victory. Awesome. I can't believe I won it. It's just, wow, I only dreamed about doing this. Your second run was kind of tactical. You let Regina buy so that she would lead down most of the course. Is that right? Yeah, I let her buy up top because all I had to do was stay within three and a half seconds of her. And she's stronger at the bottom, so I thought if I could make her do all the work in the wind, I might be able to wear out. Congratulations. You've earned it. Thank you very much. She can take a front row seat because coming up next, the men's final. A 1600th of a second advantage McCroy has over this man, Miles Rockwell. The men's final is the Englishman versus the American, and McCroy with just an eye blink of an advantage from that first run. So Miles Rockwell has got his work cut out for him. He's got to try to find 16 hundredths of a second or more somewhere on this five-minute race course. The 10th time down the hill for both these guys. They've got to be feeling it in their legs and in their arms. A little bit like the final round of a heavyweight prize fight. These guys are arm-weary, actually leg-weary, probably bone-weary from head to foot. McCroy gets the advantage and holds on to the lead. He's got to try to control this race. On the other hand, Miles Rockwell has to look for an opportunity on one of the many turns on this race course. They both know this course so well after being down it so many times they could do it in their sleep. Still, it's a chess match at 50 miles an hour. Now, McCroy had tried to gain an advantage on that upper part of the course to get a gap on Miles Rockwell. Rockwell was able to close it, and now with the two of them just a few bike lengths apart, they're both tiptoeing through that soft turn. The course has definitely softened up a little bit up top. And now we see McCroy looking over at Rockwell, Rockwell looking at McCroy, each waiting for the other one to make some kind of a decisive move. We can see him just watching each other. It's kind of a cat and mouse game right here, but at any time, one of them Whoa. could explode out of the turn, take advantage of the other guy's mistake. Rockwell almost made a mistake right there. Both of them had the outriggers fully extended on that very slow right-hand turn, and now as they get into a more pedaling section of the course, McCroy tries to use that big gear and open a gap, but Rockwell's equal to the task. Miles tucks down in that aerodynamic position, and it sucks him right back on his wheel. Drafting so important, especially because the wind has been blowing right at these riders up the face of the mountain, so it definitely favors the rear guy. He's getting a lot less work done here, while as the rider in the front is expending much more energy on this open part of the course where the wind's blowing at him. 56 miles an hour, and when they go down through these lower turns at over 50 miles an hour, a small mistake can mean a big gap. Look at the way the course rattles them there as the arm muscles start flapping along there and now as we get into a pedaling part of the course here once again McCroy stands up on the saddle 
and tries to open a gap using his leg power that he has said has stood him in good stead so far here today, but Rockwell is not to be dropped. Miles knows he's at a disadvantage. He's got 16 hundredths of a second to make up, and he doesn't want to wait till the final turn. All he needs is one little opportunity, but where is it going to come from? McCoy has been virtually flawless all day long. He has ridden very well. Little bobble right there, and you can see how little it takes for a guy like Miles Rockwell to close the gap. He is so good in the corners, but these two guys are both extremely efficient in the turns. McCoy is not going to give him any room to pass if he can help it. He's definitely blocking up the course, trying to get his wings out, trying to keep his legs out, doing whatever he can, even if he has to get sideways across the road to keep Rockwell from getting an easy pass. Jason McCroy still controlling the race from the front. Rockwell looked like he tried to make a move right there and then maybe, maybe thought better of it and sat up. Miles better do it quick. There's not much time left. Look, there he goes. He just holds off the brakes a second longer than McCrory going into that turn. He got around him on a crucial part of the course. As they go off the jump right now, no one has been able to pass on the bottom of the course except Jason McCrory. He did it to Rockwell last time right here. He's going to have to use that sprint to tighten it up if he's going to win. Last corner, and Rockwell has got his leg out close to the fence once again, but it looks like Miles Rockwell has got the win, but is it by enough? Yes, 33 hundredths of a second. He has turned the deficit around, and by 17 hundredths is the Eliminator champion. When we come back, we'll talk to the winner. Imagine doing an hour-long sprint downhill, all kamikaze. Just picture that. 30 miles, basically. 30 miles of high speed, 50 mile an hour downhill. Yeah! Miles, pretty good ride there. Uh, you kept it close uh, in that second race. Yeah, uh, it was, where'd you get him? It was incredibly close. Um, I got to take my hat off to uh, Jason. He's an incredible rider. He's got a little more leg power than me, but I'm a little faster in the turns. For a minute there, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get by him. He stopped pedaling, I kept pedaling. I just got right by him. I stand on his wheel the whole way. Let him tire himself out, and then I got on him and won it. Well, a nice big payday for you. Congratulations. Sure is. Thanks a lot. Okay, now let's go to Ned Overend, who's with our runner-up. You said you were having some problems shifting. Did you miss a gear in there somewhere? Yeah, I think I've, uh, my gears got clogged up a little bit with dust, and um, I shifted going into the last corner, and I moved down and jumped about two on the block. I was in too big a gear to come off the finish, so I thought I might be able to you know, keep the deficit down, um, but he got me. A pair of very deserving champions here in the Reebok Eliminator. First, Ned over and Kim Sonnier rode flawlessly to take her title. Absolutely. She was very consistent all day. It took a lot of mental toughness to be riding on the edge that fast. It was really incredible. She was a worthy champion. And on the other hand, though, Miles Rockwell, well, he had a few tense moments on the way to his title, but turned into a pretty happy guy at the end. Absolutely. He was really well matched against Jason McCroy. And uh, very exciting final. It turned into just a few mistakes, made the difference. And McCroy, what a surprise out of him. His career just getting started here at the Reebok Eliminator, and that has made the career of more than a few riders. Well, we hope that you enjoyed the competition here. We certainly did. Kim Sonye of Team Kalua and Team Yeti's Miles Rockwell, champions of the Reebok Eliminator. For my broadcast partner, Ned Overin, this is Brian Drebber saying so long from Mammoth Mountain. The Reebok Eliminator has been brought to you by Reebok, who reminds you that on planet Reebok, there are no boundaries. And presented to you by Mountain Dew. The Reebok Eliminator has been produced by ESPN in association with Studio 5 Sports and Bennett Productions.